We're back to the Neil Haley Show. And you know what? We talk about New York Times bestselling authors. And we're excited to talk today. But I first want to welcome my co-host, Paul Hollis, author of the Hall of Man series and uh, CEO of Seniors Publishing. How are you, Paul? I know you're excited about our guest today. I am. We we have one of the best uh, uh, New York Times bestsellers on, on our show here in, uh, in Lincoln Child. And we're excited to talk to him. Yes. Uh, you're talking about Dead Mountain today, Lincoln. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, listen, I wouldn't miss it. I'm just sorry uh, uh, you can't see me in person. Um, it's, it's, I've been blaming technology. Um, That's okay. Not myself. We're going to talk about how did, you, how did that happen? Becoming a New York Times bestselling author. Then we'll talk about the latest book. It happened um, in, in, in a strange way because uh, um, I know, I think a lot of people probably start out to, to say, I'm going to write a New York Times bestselling book. But, you know, and then you sort of stop and wonder, well, how the hell do I do that? Um, what happened, uh, the, the short version is I used to be an editor at St. Martin's Press. And I, I tapped a guy named Douglas Preston to write a book about the National History Museum, you know, a behind the scenes tour of all the things that go on and all the Indiana right. Jones types who worked there. And that book was called Dinosaurs in the Attic. And it was, it was, you know, it was a success. And I, he gave, the best part was he gave me a tour of all these weird rooms, like the dinosaur bone storage room, which had to be in the basement. Otherwise the weight would collapse the floor and the whale eyeball room, you know, and all these things. And, and I turned to him and I said, this would make a great thriller. Um, and I was just leaving St. Martin's at that time. I'd always enjoyed writing as a kid, but when you're an editor, you know, you get so sick of reading good and, and bad manuscripts that is the last thing you want to do. But now that I'd left publishing, the in interest came back and he and I wrote the book, The Relic, together just self-indulgently we never th were thought it would get published but you know what it it took us years and doug, doug gave up for a while oh uh, and, and it was mine alone we got it published and then it was made into a movie by paramount and then in paperback it made the lowest spot on the new york times list it was in fact it was tied for lowest spot um and then we thought, okay, great, we're bestsellers now, our careers are made. And then we had a dry spell for like five books. And it wasn't until we came back to our character, Agent Pendergast, and made him a serious character that we began climbing a bottle of the basement and we started having real success with, with him um, later on in the uh, late 90s. Wow. And so that's amazing. Uh and so you kind of have hit the gamut of goals of what an author should be, right? Meaning everything yeah. that you check yeah. that box, everything that an author wants, you got. Well, you know, it's funny because since I was a pu in publishing, I knew a lot of agents. And so I knew that I could at least get my book read, you know, um, because that's the hardest thing to do. You know, how do you get through all those all those e bouncers at the door, you know, you got to get an agent and then the agent has to like it. And then the agent has to send it to a publisher, an editor has to read it, so on and so on and get the money. So I knew I could get it read at least by an agent. Um, and the first couple turned me down who read it. So that, ouch, that was like payback for all the books I had declined, all the hundreds and hundreds of books I had declined during my career. Oh wow! You know, and that's the that's the exciting part, right? Getting there and getting the, the opportunity and all this stuff. So, tell us about the latest book. Yeah, the latest book is called Dead Mountain. Um, you know, our, our our this character I mentioned, Asian Pendergast, has. We must have Doug and I write both solo novels and and novels together, and the Pendergast books are our most successful. But he's had a lot of interesting characters come into them and two of them are these women uh nora kelly and corey swanson who one is an archaeologist in santa fe and the other one is a fledgling fbi agent in um in albuquerque 
And we thought, you know, these two characters have been in a bunch of our Pendergast novels. They would make a great team for a series of their own. And so this is the fourth book in that series, and it's really great because we love archaeology, and Doug spends half the year in Santa Fe, so he knows that world really well. And, you know, if Nora finds these old bones or a, a dead prospector or something, she can call Corey in to do the, the forensic work, or if Corey has a case that needs archaeological expertise, she can uh, bring in uh, Nora. And, you know, in this particular case, we took a Russian mystery um, that had happened in the Dyatlov Pass where eight young hikers, winter hikers, perished and then were found naked or half naked and shooed up days later. And nobody knew what happened. And we decided we would transplant that story to the New Mexican mountains. And so it's sort of like, you know, taking the Loch Ness Monster and moving it to... Uh, Lake Michigan or something, you know, except we figured out an ending for it. Oh, wow. Paul, any questions you want to ask a New York Times bestselling author? This looks like a great book, but Paul, you got your chance. Go. No, this is, this is fantastic. Uh -huh. I've, I've been a fan of yours since, since the relic. And uh, wow. so I'm, I, I'm Thank looking you. forward, I'm looking forward to this. It, that was, and it made a, a great movie as well too, but I, I like I like the book better. So. Well, but, thank so I'm you. Looking, I'm um, looking for. I'm looking forward to this. As an author, you probably know that uh, a lot of opportunities supposedly come along for making a TV series or a film, but they very rarely ever turn out. I mean, pan out. And we've we've seen so many in the last ten years that we've had our hopes raised and then dashed again and again. So. Um, but we were lucky to get that one done. And thank you for, for being a reader. You know, what's really great about this is we were able to take a true life mystery. I mean, you know, it's that nobody knows the answer to um, and transplant it from Russia, which nobody wants to hear about anyway, and put it in, in the Manzana Mountains of New Mexico, where they have an old presidential bunker nobody knows about from the Truman days. They have a big nuclear stockpile at the Air Force Base there. And we're able to bring all these things into a story about archaeology and hiking and, you know, uh, FBI investigation and and try and entertain people while we teach them about, about things. Well, wow, it's, I'm, like I said, this is amazing. I want to tell you Paul's story real quick, Lincoln. Please, he, yeah. His book series is, fiction but get this it's the funniest part is that it's really about his story he he wrote a book called the hollow man series not like the hollow man movie but this is at, before that fact but he was he fought terrorism in the 1970s and really? he was uh like a um you know uh basically but he was a red shirt that was like in overseas kind of explain paul but what's so cool about it is that he's a real life jason Bourne, and his 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 co-partner who's in the books literally he saw him kill people i mean paul i don't know paul maybe you can't tell me that stuff but go ahead, paul and explain that to him yeah i i um i had an interesting childhood but but anyways i ended up in the the peace corps and then and then on to uh they found me there the the NSA found me there basically and and said you want to tour Europe and and I said sure I mean, on somebody else's money why not and uh, so what they they wanted me to do was collect and verify information uh, on terrorism and and make sure that it wasn't actually coming to the United States borders um, and and so and I was supposed to collect this information and kind of turn it over to the to the to uh, the professionals let's say and and that would you know be for everybody's uh, no meaning today is is the CIA, but uh, for resolution and uh, but but I sort of got more entangled and in, and in interested in what I was doing and sort of took things a little bit too far. So so but basically, yeah, I was I was like the red red shirt guy in a Star Trek episode. Uh, didn't know it at the uh -huh. time, but didn't know it at the time, but but um, but it was it was all there. So that yeah, that's. That's my story. <laughs> so that's what you mean by red shirt. Okay, now I yeah. gotcha. Um, yeah. 
Well, so you went from the peace corps to the anti peace corps, basically. Yeah, right. exactly. Then, and uh, I, I had, I had uh, actually uh, majored in staying out of Vietnam in college, so, so <laughs> I, I wasn't, I wasn't really suitable for any other type of job. <laughs> Let me ask you a question: um, If you've actually lived that that world or some some segment of that world, how does it feel to you when you read thrillers by people? I won't name any names, but there's there's no shortage of terrorist novels out there. I mean, you mentioned Jason Bourne or somebody, um, but you know, do you, do they do you nod in 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 agreement? Do they upset you because they're unrealistic, or how do you feel about them? Well, I I uh, good question. I I actually look at them as as entertainment, and knowing that knowing that even if it was true. Uh, that they really couldn't tell you the whole story anyway. So then that was, I mean, that that's how I look at at books on on subjects like that. Is is that is it entertaining? Is it keep does it keep me uh, involved? Does it does it make me a part of the story? Um, those are the things that I that, that I look for in in any kind of novels, but but especially in in those kinds of things, with John Le Care and 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 his and his counterparts, you know. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, I mean, I look at it as just a sort of a, a you know, a, a part of the game. You know, it's it's a part maybe that I didn't experience or 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 something of that sort. So I, I just look at it as as oh, it's information. I learn something every day. <laughs> I, right. You know, John John Le is one of my f favorite authors of all time. I mean, Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy. I'm yeah. gonna say I had to read that three times until I understood everything because. He just dumps you in the world and doesn't explain what's going on. You know, you have to learn how to swim on your own, which yeah. is which is tough, but it's very immersive. Yeah, now, I, I've actually I've actually been compared to John McCarran. If this is oh yeah <laughs> yeah, well, yeah good but, for you. He's that's, a he's a that's really that's a good writer, Lincoln. That's just not been discovered. I've been repping him, and, and he's been he's been a co-host of all my different marketing services, and it's got him out there more. But the biggest challenge, Lincoln, is basically, you know, our literary agent's going to pick you up. So he self-published all his books, but there's such great stories that everyone who reads a little bit of it, they want his book. So I guess it's never give up type of thing in, in this you know, process. Go ahead. That reminds me so much of where I was like four or five books into it. We'd almost, you know, uh, grab the brass ring, but we didn't. And Doug would get depressed and say, oh, geez, another book can be, you know, we didn't sell that many. And, and I kept saying, look at Elmore Leonard. I think that's the guy he used. He had to write 30 books, you know, and it just kept getting better and better. And then we wrote one book where word, the word of mouth finally reached a tipping point. And, Bob, I think that, you know, that's what has to happen. You, you know, word of mouth is, is gold. You can't get enough of that. And if, if that right. keeps building, um, that's what sells books, I think. Well, um, we're already seeing that firsthand, Lincoln, by getting those little excerpts out of his books. And these are all older books he's written. Imagine the uh, book four, for sure. But where are people going to purchase your book? It's available on Amazon, all finer bookstores, right? Yes, it is. Um, uh, went on sale on the 22nd. Uh, and um, I hope that... Uh, you know, you, you you get a chance to read it because we, I tried to do just, just what you were saying, you know, have it an exciting story and one that's credible, but holds your attention. And, uh, you know, you can always do better. And, and, and so can, and so can Doug and I, but, you know, we enjoy it. And that's the most important thing. If you weren't, if we didn't enjoy it, we'd stop working. And, and Paul, I'm sure that's what keeps you going too, is, is this lo love of writing. Exactly. Right. I, I I taught him that he needs to build a TAM from his brand, and that's what I'm working <laughs> on right now for him. Okay. I I built right. mine. That's what I figured yeah. out, Lincoln. I don't get rich off the show. I don't get rich off yeah. of anything yet, but I mean, I make my money from my brand, and that's the way to do mm -hmm. things. But I appreciate it, Lincoln. Thanks for stopping by. And do you have a website, too, in your co op Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. I have two of them. There's www.prestonchild.com. And then for my own books, there's www.lincolnchild.com. Um, no. Thank you for having me on, and I wish you both all the best. And um, we appreciate I'll look you, for those Lincoln. books. Paul. And we're going to have you on the board, too. 
on video. So figure okay. out that technology. Is there a chance your co-author can be on too? We'll make it happen. Yes, sir. Yes, there's a very good chance. This is the first interview he's missed, and he had a a, a commitment he just couldn't break. And you know, it's this is my fault because I thought this was a um just a, a taped uh radio quote unquote interview. So I did it in my Zoom apparatus all set. Oh, up. that's I okay, was... but it is radio. It is. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm. I'm what we call the hybrid. We appreciate Lincoln. Thanks for stopping by, sir. Okay. You got you're it. Listening, you're you listening, got watching it. the Neil Haley Show, and we'll be back in just a moment.